Hello, Randy readers. This is Miss Lags a lot, and I am here in the presence of, I won't say a goddess, but something like it. I'm with Lisa Ann in her hotel room. This is so exciting. Hi, Lisa. Hi there. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm very excited right now. Um, I bet all of our readers or watchers are too. Um, and there's like massive sirens outside, so so everyone's coming for us right now. I hear it and feel it. We're so hot. The fire engines are after us. It's kind of amazing. Um, well. Normally what I have people do at this point is tell the watchers a little bit about themselves, but I kind of feel like that would be ridiculous. Um, but just in case, there's something out there. I do laugh at this. It's, it's very good you see this, because when I do an interview and the guy the same question that I've been asked for, it'll be 19 years in July that I've been in the business, and he's like, so, you know, how did you get in the business? And I'm like, really? You haven't read that enough by now? Is that It's getting old. Come up with something else. So very good that we're going to talk about other topics. And for those people who don't know, um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, Easton, Pennsylvania, which is north of Philadelphia. I moved to L.A. when I was 20 on a one-way ticket because I wanted to get in the business, and I just wanted to live in California since I was so young. I remember watching the show 90210 and just seeing everything about their style and their life and the weather and everything. I was like, they had a cordless phone, and we didn't have a cordless <laughs> phone. I was like, everything's better in California, so I must go there. So I made the move. Um, and now I'm looking to move back to the East Coast part-time because New York is my favorite place. So I'll be looking for a place in this city and then I'll still have a place in California and a place in New York. Fabulous. We like New York too, obviously, because WAC is located here. Um, so when you were growing up, did you come up to New York a lot? I did. Uh, I used to skip school and take the bus into the city for a piece of pizza and a soda like almost every Friday. I'd save my lunch money all week and I'd sneak in here until I took my brother once and then he dimed me out. We got in trouble. Uh, but my mom cultured us and brought us into the city a lot to see musicals and, and to go out to dinner. So I would come at least once a month. And the pizza here really is better, isn't it? <laughs> it is better. We have one place in California. It's called Mulberry Street. And she ships in the water from New York because she thinks it's the water that makes the dough rise differently. I've heard that. And I've heard the same about bagels, which yes. is why the bagels here is yes. better. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really eaten pizza or bagels on the West Coast, but I know I love it here. Um, but so you have, since you moved to California, you have traveled like the world. You have been everywhere. So if you had to pick a place besides New York, I mean, where's your favorite place to travel to? That's so tough. I really like France. Um, I just went to Budapest last year and it was magnificent. It's so beautiful there. I'm going to go back this year and I'm going to go to Vienna and Prague since they're all very close. Um, New York, Miami, LA are amazing places in the US and the shopping in Paris is the best. The best lingerie shopping in the world is in Paris. Um, so it's really, really tough. I just like the adventure of not having to be solid somewhere so much and being able to see different people and different things and eat different food all the time. Well, I know that um, you took a break from filming for a while. You were on the road doing just feature dancing for seven years. Yep. So you saw a lot of the little in between cities and everything. And I saw feature dance uh, about forty-five to forty-seven weekends a year. So I still am on the road. Wow. So obviously you've got you're doing something right with feature dancing. You you, you have it down. So if you had to pick your favorite song to dance to, what's your favorite? If I had to pick one song, it would be the Eminem song that I was in the music video for, uh, We Made You. And the reason is, it still like gives me chills every time it starts to play and I hear it, I think, what an amazing experience I had being able to be a part of that music video, being asked to do that, uh, working with Eminem, and now how it's evolved to be so many other projects in my life. And, uh, you know, so it's like a little flashback down memory lane. I hear it and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. You know what I mean? I'm lucky. Like, that's awesome. So it gets you like in the zone. Yeah, yeah, it just excites me. And sometimes we can get so, we have so many things going on in our life and you forget to really stop and appreciate everything. And so it reminds me to just really appreciate that, that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you really do have a lot going on in your life. I mean, you are running around doing feature dancing, you're filming, you own your own businesses, you're on top of everything. And you probably get asked this a lot, but I mean, how, how do you do everything that you need to do in a day? Um, I'm just one of those really weirdly lucky people that my friends say I do more in a day than they do in a month. I'm active. I like to stay busy. I like to have as much experience in every day as possible. I, I can't really lag. Um, but I take little secret downtime. You know, my gym, 
the gym is my downtime. I love to go to the gym. That's where I get in my own headspace. I escape into my music. I read a magazine or I catch up on texting. And the gym is a good spot. And then I love to, to spa. Spa massage is one of my biggest weaknesses, and uh, it really keeps me centered. You know, it makes you be healthy, think healthy. It keeps you on track. And you know, Bob Hope used to get a massage every day. He had a live-in massage therapist, and he was very ahead of his time because he believed that in a holistic and uh, not taking medicine. Look how old he lived to be, and how healthy he was for such a long period of his life. So, I believe in massage, and that's kind of how I zone out. Okay. So when you're at the gym, if you're on, you know, the treadmill or something that you're doing like that, what's your favorite song to listen to then? I just don't have one because one would get old because I work out almost every day. But I listen to a lot of old Tupac, a lot of old Biggie, a lot of really old hip hop. Um, and then, you know, you throw in some good new DJs uh, like uh, Gutta and DJ Vice. And uh, I'm going to see Tiesto in Montreal with Nikki next month. So DJ mixes are great, too. So you're into hip hop very into hip hop. You're also really into sports, which I just learned. Um, so are you, since you're from the East Coast, are you an East Coast team girl or are you a West Coast team girl? Okay, with basketball is my first love. Uh, I played basketball in high school. I was a huge Bulls fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge uh, Phil Jackson fan. So when Phil moved to the Lakers, I moved to the Lakers. So I've been a Lakers fan ever since. But I do watch about six or seven other teams. I follow the Heat. I follow the Celtics. I follow the Bucks. So I'm always watching. I follow the Bulls still. Um, and then I'm watching, of course, it's March Madness right now. And everyone knows I love my UConn boys. So uh, UConn's playing tonight. They're going to win. So basketball first, then my football team's the Cowboys. And then baseball, I don't really have a team, but I go to a lot of games. So whenever I'm on the road, whenever I get my dance bookings, the first thing I do is I look up what's going on in that city that weekend. And if it's a team and I want to see play, sometimes I'll try and get a booking in that city. Like I wanted to see the Heat play the Knicks. So I got myself booked here in New York in December so I could go to the Heat-Knicks game. So I do work that into my life as much as possible. <laughs> Wow, so that's juggling like one more thing on your yeah. schedule. <laughs> but it makes the trip, you know, you don't just want to go and travel for business and just travel for business. You want to enjoy that city and their arena and, right. and you know, get out and, and just be with people, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, and then you've got to be able to do that to be in this business and yeah. really work it. So um, this is a stupid question, but I'm kind of curious. What's your sign? I'm a Taurus. Oh, I could see that. Very grounded, right? What's your sign? I'm an Aquarius. Oh, you're the lovers of the world. Yeah, I'm very thinky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my birthday is May 9th, and I'm going to be 39 this year. Wow, are you ready for the big 4-0 next year? I am. I'm having four birthday parties this year because <laughs> I feel that I should really go big for my last year in my 30s. Uh, and then my 40th birthday, I'd like to take six weeks off and go to a place my girlfriend loves in Santorini, a very good friend of mine. I'd like to go to Greece. I'd like to rent the place for four or six weeks and have all my friends come over at different times and just vacation with me. That sounds fantastic. That's the way to do it. I'd like to do that for my next birthday, but there's no way that's going to happen. <laughs> well, okay, so... Um, I almost hate to ask these questions because I'm sure you've been asked many, many things about your time as Sarah Palin, but we happen to be right now just a few blocks away from Rockefeller Center. Um, and that made me start thinking about Tina Fey, and I know that you absolutely love love Tina Fey. So what if, say, you were walking down the street today and you know you turn the corner and Tina Fey ran into you? What would you say to her? Well, it's interesting you ask this because uh, she spoke of me twice now. The American Broadcast Association, she was the speaker, and she went up there and she said, you know, uh, Sarah Palin and I have something in common, and it's adult film star Lisa Ann. And, you know, and she went in this thing, and, I, and, and I'm, I, I was on the road, and Christian, my friend Christian called me, and he's like, yo, go to YouTube right now, right? So I see this on YouTube, and I watch it like a hundred times, and I'm like crying. Like, I can't even, like, the fact that she wrote my name down and planned this in a speech. It's like one of the smartest women in the world. She wrote Mean Girls. Like, I could watch that movie a hundred <laughs> times a day. She's spectacular and she spoke of me like I was like her you know so if I ever got the opportunity to meet her which I hope I one day will um, I would just did like to tell her that I'm just such a fan of her work and I love everything she does and I watch everything she does and I follow her and I think she's definitely making a mark uh, in the world of producing and writing and she's extremely talented and I was just honored that she spoke of me and I, I just thank her <laughs> 